You can either be in the world or you can be in the church, but you can't do both. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Chikuni. So Dante Bo released a video for one of his latest singles, and it is now making the rounds. People have seen it, and there are thoughts on it from the Christian world as to be expected. So we're going to go ahead and hop right into this. Let me uh, bring this up for y'all. So this song is called Wind Me Up, all right? This song is called Wind Me Up. This is a portion, a clip from the uh, full music video, which he links in his bio. This is from his Instagram page. So this is his little promo clip of the song. Now, obviously, you can't see too much here. We cannot play the song as well. We're not going to do none of that. We ain't getting no copyright strikes up in here. So from this, you can gather that there's a you know festive atmosphere in the song, a lot of dancing, and the imagery is what really has caused a lot of the conversations that people are having about this, at least from the believer standpoint. All right. So let's go ahead and pull up some of these comments, man. I'm going to bring these up for y'all so you can see, man. I mean, this is one of the posts right here. So the person says, listen, I hate condemnation. I experienced the worst from the church during the hardest time in my life. But brother in Christ, this isn't it. Spirits of lust and perversion all over the woman in a bra sexualizing herself Anybody with a drop of discernment can see that. You can't pretend this glorifies God. Gospel on the album or not, you're gifted and the enemy wants to pervert it because he hated that you used to worship God, used it to worship God and draw people closer to him. This just isn't that deep. It's clear. Watch Delilah, Samson, watch Jezebel. They're looking to steal your strength in the spirit. What they're saying is factual. Right. The point of what this person is saying is that there is some sexual imagery here that is undeniable and it is not glorifying to God. You know what I'm saying? It's just straight up not glorifying to God. There's another comment right here. I pray for you. It's sad. You know what I'm saying? When I gave my life to Jesus in 2019, the Lord led me to your song champion. I felt God's presence like never before. Seeing your post now in 2023, I feel so sad. I pray that you find your step back to him again. So this is people just basically saying in their minds, this to, to them indicates a falling away uh, of Dante Bo in this instance, man. So this is the uh, cover for the project here or the single, you know, uh, this is off the website. So it's Dante Bo, Wind Me Up, featuring Anthony B. So now, to be fair, the song is not super like vulgar or hypersexual in its content, right? It's not necessarily that. Uh, what you might find, though, is um, the issue here is, for from my perspective, is really just, okay, what does he want to be, right? What does Dante Bo want to be? Does he want to be a, a, a gospel artist or does he want to be a secular artist? Um, I know in recent years, there's a whole debate about whether or not people need to have labels on them and labels put people in boxes and this and that, but it's not even about that. It's not even about labels putting you in a box. It's just about you need to decide because there are dangers to what you are doing. And that's what my issue is with it. They're dangers to what he's doing. If he wants to be a secular artist, he has the freedom to do so. He has freedom to make any kind of music he wants. Nobody's knocking him. The problem is, if you want to identify yourself as a Christian artist, a gospel artist, then you have a problem because this is at odds with what you claim to represent. There's nothing in... These still photos here, still shots from the video that suggest that this is a gospel artist, okay? There's nothing that, nothing that suggests that. 
And we're in a time right now, man, where it's like people try to make things cool. And if you talk about stuff, you're being judgmental. Uh, like the sister said earlier, man, I think it was a sister who said it earlier, man, who said, look, this is a clear issue. This is just a clear issue. Like this doesn't glorify God. You know what I'm saying? This doesn't glorify God. Now, if you want to make that kind of music, say you want to make that kind of music, don't label yourself as a Christian artist. Don't win. Don't don't go up for Christian or gospel uh, awards, right? Don't get nominated for any any of those. Just do your thing. Do your thing, but but stop deceiving people and and deceiving yourself at this point that what you're doing glorifies God. Another issue I really have with this whole uh, situation is that, and this is probably one of the most dangerous parts of it, is that by him doing this, right, like artists like this are supposed to be considered safe artists for Christians to listen to. So if you're uh, presenting yourself as one of those safe artists that Christian can listen to, then you have, you're going to have moms allowing their kids to listen to this music, to watch these music videos, right? You're going to have people who have struggled with maybe pornography or are struggling with that, and you are creating a stumbling block for them when they have to look at this imagery, okay? They, they came to you thinking that, you know, you had, this was a safe, I don't like to use the term safe space because, you know, you know, but I'm going to use it for, for the sake of this analogy, okay? So they, they come to you thinking that this is a safe space, okay, where they can <laughs> come and not be bombarded by imagery that is going to cause them to stumble. But, and it's no laughing matter. I'm just, I'm just kind of just dumbfounded by this whole situation, how everything has unfolded, man, I mean, at this point. For those who don't know, those who are not aware, let's just go ahead and read this clip right here from the good folks at Protestia on one of the uh, articles that they wrote, okay? And this was here just explaining, this gives you a little bit of background because we just want to talk about how he got here, okay? So fans of Bo were dismayed. He was removed over a seemingly minor infraction. This is in reference to him being removed from Maverick City. Fans of Bo were dismayed he was removed over seemingly minor infraction, yet media obtained exclusively by Protestia suggests it wasn't the only reason. Bo also accidentally posted a brief video on his Instagram stories that was quickly deleted, but not before being captured and saved. In this short clip, Bo films himself naked in front of a mirror, wearing only a tank top, rolled up to his armpits while he preens and exposes himself. Recently, Bo also made the news after his pastor friend and business partner went on a pro-alphabet rant at a worship concert his church was hosting. So this is about the Amen Church situation when he was there and the pastor there. Uh, you know, I'll try, I'll try to put a link in the video for y'all if you haven't seen it. I'm pretty sure y'all have seen it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But Dante Bo was there and this was the church that he apparently was attending. So we see the reasons why it seems he was actually actually let go from Maverick City music, right? It was not just about the the Bad Bunny post, the uh, or him dancing to the music, or how he said when he got to uh I guess it was the Grammys or whatever award show that he couldn't he was waiting, he couldn't wait to see little Nas X. So some of the lack of wisdom there and discernment that he displayed and even not even thinking about it in his mind that, hey, maybe maybe even if he thought about it, just not to say it, right? Because he's like, hey, I'm a Christian artist. Let me try and keep this on the low that that's who I really want to see. But no, he didn't even have that level of discernment. So it's not just about bad decision making. It's about us really getting to see through all these instances that 
in all honesty, we have to wonder about the spiritual health of this man and where he really is in his walk with Christ if he is walking with Christ. He should have sat down way longer than he sat down for because he did not have enough time. When you really look at it, I don't believe he had enough time to uh, actually be somebody who we can say has had a moment to sit down and to rethink these things and to repent. And then if you repent, but then you come back and you're doing the same thing you were doing or you're doing things that make us question you again, then that is a point where we have to wonder about where you're at with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We just have to wonder what is going on with you, where you're at with the Lord. We know that there's the cost of discipleship, right? So this is Luke 14. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, Yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, any of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. I'm highlighting this passage here to show, to make the point that we must understand as believers that there is a cost to following Christ. And we cannot try to embrace and maintain a one foot in the world and one foot in the church, quote unquote, and dangle between these two things Because at some point, like you're definitely not deceiving God, so you are deceiving yourself and you're taking yourself, leading yourself down the path of destruction. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth, all right? God bless y'all, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.